Hey y'all, it's been a little while. Been really, really busy. Um, been trying a little, uh, it's got a lot more light in here. Okay. The odd thing is I only paid a dollar to get the additional light. I went to the dollar store and bought that and started playing around with the angles to get the flood to come down. So hopefully this is gonna be better now. <clears throat> so the topic of this video is nothing is new, okay? Um, and what I'm pertaining to on that is firearms. Now, I know I'm going to sound like I'm an ancient old crockety guy, and I'm not trying to. I'm just exp exp explaining my experience. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, you had iron sights. That was it. If you had a scope, it was usually a fixed power scope, and it was... You know, nothing to write home about. Um, there were just uh, old hunting scopes like Redfields and things like that. And a lot of the hunting that we did was just with iron sights. I mean, that's all you needed. And the only semi-automatic uh, semi rifle that, that we ever used for, for um, hunting was an M1 Grand. You know, an, an actual military rifle <laughs> so um but the, the point where i'm getting at is as time went by you know um got up into my early 20s the ak's that were coming into the united states that were common block that, that people would pay a lot of money for today we got those fairly reasonably priced very reasonable price compared to what it is today um and the reason why is because you couldn't get an ar-15 a bone stock ar-15 forget it i mean you're gonna pay a lot of money the best way that we got around getting an ar-15 was buying it in parts kits not a rifle and then having it put together so as time went on you know i managed to save up my money get an ar-15 and then I guess I became part of the AR-15 Fanboy Club, et cetera. So what, what this is about, the topic of this, this, this video is nothing's ever new. So for years, we've been now running, I'll pick up my recce, for example, you know, complete flat top, free float rail. Um, uh, I have a light on this one. I don't have anything else on it. No night vision stuff, nothing like that. Um, you know, it's got some bells and whistles on it. So back in the day, um, if you wanted, like, for example, a bipod, well, you got one of those old school um, scissor bipods and you just scissored on, you know, had a scissor mouth and it went onto the barrel and that was it. And then you took it off. Uh, if you got the plastic ones that didn't last, if you got the real ones, they lasted longer. <clears throat> so, prior to that, what you had was, and this is, I'm showing you uppers that are, that have the parts of it. If you, oh, just bear with me here. So prior to that, prior to the flat tops and all that, <clears throat> We had the old school hand guards. Uh, we had front sight posts. No flat top. We had a carry handle. Okay. Um, I guess this is a better representation except for the uh, Magpul key mod. So today I'm noticing the hot craze is 1.93 mounts or higher mounts because people are run, running uh, their guns flat, but they're running night vision and one other type of setup. But I find it interesting that, what's that? Okay, so you know, nothing's, nothing's new. New components, yes. New technology making components, yes. Uh, new designs that are better yes that's new design 
even though it's uh, old design today, it's new compared to what I'm getting at about the standard handguard. Okay. So, um, our lights are better. Our light mounts are better, but nothing is new. I mean, you were still dealing with going right back and back around the circle again. So like I have, as you see here, I put this on, I have the capability of running uh, some type of uh, low power variable optic. I also have the capability of running, which is not on my desk, is it? Do, do, do. Hmm. Must have put it up in my uh, box. But I also have the capability of taking this off and putting a, another mount on there and running just a red dot. So is it pretty? Is it flashy? No but it's the same thing. Does it add weight? Yeah. I mean, you know, cause you got this, you've got this uh, excess metal here. Okay. And that adds weight. And it's, it's got, it's got some weight. It's got some heft to it. It's got some weight. Uh, but the point of it is <clears throat> LBPO. I've seen them run people run them up to one nine three. What's that? Um, you know, when we had the carry handles and nobody wanted them anymore and we had the standard, uh, hand guards and nobody wanted them anymore, they wanted something like this. So, um, this is my, uh, CMMG MK4 PDW upper and three in a blackout. Now note, okay, now this isn't correct. I just put them on here. Um, but you got the capability of LB, L, LPVO, light, that kind of thing. It's too low, okay? But back in the day, that's what people did. They, they, cause you want it as low as you can to the, to the barrel, to the bore. Um, so you can get the best accuracy. <clears throat> Um, this needs to be a little bit higher and I don't have anything to raise the height of the, uh, the scope as, as the way I want it. Not yet. Anyway, working on it. That's later on. <clears throat> so this is a UTG slim riser. It's a one inch riser. So a one inch riser with uh, the hollow sun uh, uh, 510C and it does not, my cheek is here, but I gotta raise my head up just a little bit to get myself in line. But it's still the same thing. It's, it's coming off, it's getting higher up because you, you want that natural heads up display or at heads up, you know, you want the gun goes, the gun goes to your face. Your face don't go to the gun. So all that turtleneck and we've done for a few years now, people are paying the price of it in their spine and then, and then, and then their, their back and neck, um, the, the, the back of the neck right here and the spine is now giving some of these guys who's, who's had to do it professionally a lot of problems um so nothing's new it's the same thing uh I've been, I, I, for example 1.93 or these other high mounts i don't see i just don't understand why you would do that with a scope i'd like to try it i'd like to try it out and, and play with it and see if, if i'm understanding it correctly because I still look at it and go, well, you're going to need some kind of uh, cheek riser, you know, for your face. I understand this more. I can see this better because, because after all, this is, uh, I look at this and go, okay, you're a, 
you're a 300 yard, you're a 300 yard rifle. Um, when it comes to scopes, I actually prefer something like this, okay? Um, Cause you're, you can get all the purchase you can using the actual stock for your cheek. But, um, go on right back to nothing's new. Back in the day, what did we do? We took an old school carry handle. We put on a mount of some type for scope and we put a scope on there. And now we are, you know, you think about that. So now all right, your, your cheek is probably like down in here, touching on the stock to see the scope. So, um, I have not <laughs> to this day yet zeroed this thing and I got to. It's just like seven, six hours a week for me and my wife. That's, that's life. Like I gotta work tonight. Um, <clears throat> the only reason why I'm making this video is because I, it's getting hard for me to sleep at night. Um, so I'm up trying to wear myself out so I can sleep. But getting back to this. So, yeah. Um, nothing's new. And you're going to see more and more of that. Like the, the, the advantages of a adjustable plate carrier. I don't have a plate carrier anymore. I can't use them because of my injuries. But an adjustable plate carrier like the micro where you take this big pouch and put these inserts in and now I'm going to take the inserts out and I'm going to put these inserts in there. Uh, I'm noticing, noticing also that, you know, I personally would like to have a one and done standalone rig if I was doing a chest rig, you know, like the, the Haley Strategic D3 chest rig, the original one that I had, loved the damn thing. That thing was, that thing was awesome. That thing gave me everything I needed and nothing I didn't, uh, uh, nothing I didn't, I didn't want, you know. Um, that's another thing too. Um, go for your needs and not for your wants when you're dealing with this stuff. You know what I mean? Stop adding another nine, five, nine or ten ounces of something onto something and then complaining about, well, that's too heavy. This, that doesn't make any sense. But, <clears throat> um, I plan on I plan on doing a series of videos when I can get a chance because I still have a list of videos. Uh, like I said on on previous uh, videos, I'm on a six months list of videos that I have written down that I want to do that deal with this upper this P, uh, PSA um, premium upper and um, see how it runs along with uh so far land uh well not so far land but along with the staccato 2011 1911 holster by blackhawk the t-series models uh, you know you can go back and see the videos of the the list of things that i'm going to review it's not been easy trying to review anything um for the last well my wife and i in september we shut the business down and we uh, also went on vacation. We, we shut the business down to go on vacation. And, you know, so now we, when we came back, it was like we never missed a beat. It was, whoosh, you know, 110 miles per hour because we got a lot of stuff lined up. And I, I might talk about that in a video about what my business is, what, what we, me and my wife do. Because it's a full-time business um, on a part-time schedule. What I mean by that is, is I'm I'm full time a law enforcement wife. She's full time in her business, and her her job, and we're running a full time business. So it's tough. Um, but I'm definitely going to try my best to get some videos in. I just don't know right now when October and November and December are busy months for us because of of um, the end of the year 
and events and all kinds of little things from turkey shoots to uh, fall festivals and et cetera. Um, touch of trucks, if you don't know what touch of truck is, uh, just let me know and I'll try to explain that. But yeah, nothing's new except material. You know, I think Jason Fala, uh, Redback One, is the one that came up with the idea of, of a 193. But if, but if you go back and look at his videos, it has nothing to do with scopes. It has to do with a red dot. Running a red dot on a 193. And the purpose for, purpose for that is passive uh, aiming with night vision, uh, better heads up display, better, better field of view, better awareness. Um, so the LPVO thing, I don't know how that that got kicked off in the 193. I think a um, I think a, a a lower one third type of height is probably better for an LPVO, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's my mind playing tricks or whatever, but like when I put this right here, I really got a turtleneck down. I got a crunch down on it because, you know, after all, that's pretty low. Versus here. But that's looks like the same height. So it could it could be me. It could be something that, that, that is just merely me. You know, um, looks can be deceiving on height and things like that. You may think you got the right height, which, you know, I, I did. I thought that I had the right height on this old boy, but I, I didn't. So <clears throat> the question is, is what, what am I going to do with it? Like, how am I going to get the height right? Am I going to put a riser on there? Or am I going to try to find um, higher rings? I don't know yet. But, um. It goes right back to nothing's new. You know, you start to see this come back around. Uh, a, a lot, not a lot, also along with the, the carry handle. You know, you start to see that the, the retro, it's, the retro's coming back. It's taking over the OG, the FUD, the old guy stuff is coming back, which is pretty cool. Um, of all three of these, or of all these type of, type of different designs, that have gone through iterations over the years. I still think the evolution of the AR-15, uh, the, the the best all-around evolution of the AR-15, is this. So you got a free float handguard, not a free float barrel. You've got um, Picatinny across the top, so you can you can plug and play. You got your, like for this one, it's key mod. I know people hate key mod, but, or AR. So you got a lot of people anti key mod. I'm not, I don't see the problem. The only problem I see with the key mod now is, is since the M-Lock has become the new king and taken over, nobody's messing around with key mod anymore. So I'm finding it a little bit harder to find key mod stuff around my area. But um, I think this is the best route to go for an AR. Just complete flat top, straight in line. It makes the gun lighter. Um, you can, if you get QDs, let's say you want to run a uh, low power variable and you decide I'm not going to run a low power variable today, pop, pop off your QDs, put them in your bag, throw your, uh, red dot on there, click it. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, go do that. But, um, I like the idea of my light being on here, right off to the sides, because because uh, after all, this is a short um, upper, so I like that I like idea because I can get my, my thumb purchased there. The only thing is the height. I got to raise this up. So, well, like I said, guys, nothing's new. Nothing's new. Uh, if you like the, the new lighting I, that I got here, please let me know. I think it's going to work really good for for my videos. And uh, 
still haven't forgot. I got my list of, of videos I'm, I'm going to be doing on <clears throat> the PSA, the staccato, a few other videos or, or a few other lists of videos that I'm doing in six months duration. The only thing I'm worried about is, is I won't be able to actually get the, get everything like I want. And that's due to the fact of time restraint. You know, like, you know, it's hard to put in, and it's hard to put in enough time when you're doing 72, 76 hours a week. Um, of just all you're doing is work. We don't have a life. We, we really don't. Um, there's an old biblical parent. There's an old biblical uh, um, statement that goes, uh, "Youth is wasted on the young," and that is an actual fact. I believe that 100%. If I had the mindset that I had to have today when I was in my 20s, maybe now that I am 50, I wouldn't be working 72 or 76 hours a week. You know, that's the way it is. But anyways, thank you for watching the videos. Nothing ain't new except the, the technology that makes things lighter, better, more durable, stronger lights output you know uh rechargeable batteries i don't have one of those yet i think that's pretty neat i'd like to get one and try it out but um i'm still i guess i got the the the, the old school you know dropping your lithium batteries um yeah so nothing ain't new this goes right back around circle again so you know we want we went with these like i said we went to something like this and then we started lobbing off the handle and just using the sights and then they started coming up with ways to figure out how to lock, how to mount something onto the receiver here which is a very um, there's a really good um, uh, video that Larry Vickers was talking about how they were back in the day they used to put rails on here that was very dangerous for the receiver so you really had to know what you were doing uh, so we went from something like this to something like this. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing new. It's gonna go right back around again. It's just gonna be somebody's gonna come up with something that is the latest and greatest, but they still did it 30 years ago. You know. Well. I'm running long with the tooth. Damn, that's 22 minutes. Sorry for the long uh, video. Uh, I'm going to try to do some more videos as time goes on. Be back directly, y'all.